As you know that India is uh, going through a tremendous uh, economic growth and um, for last uh, one decade or so we have a consistent 9% uh, growth. So at one level uh, the economic growth has helped the government to uh, make investment in many social development sector uh, but, but at the same time the role of civil society uh, is a bit confusing at this moment. Um, for many social development programs government is inviting civil society organizations but at the same time when um, civil society organizations takes a, a kind of view which uh, may not be in conformity with the government then government say who are you? Um, and then all the representation question comes. As far as service delivery is concerned, civil, civil society is most welcome. But the moment you, uh, you know, question government, then government will come with that, um, you know, who do you represent? Um, uh, are you, are you uh, represent the citizens? It's uh, the elected representatives who have the authority to ask questions, but how can you ask uh, a you know, democratically elected uh, uh, government? So that's a kind of challenge for civil society in order to uh, even initiate dialogue, uh, critical dialogue with the uh, government. That's a, that's a major, major uh, challenge for the civil society today in India. It sounds like it's a relationship of critical friend, but they kind of prefer the friend bit rather than the critical bit. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. That's right. You know, basically, um, if you are um, large enough, if you have the management capacity, if you have the professional capacity to manage a government-sponsored program, you are there. But if you are a grassroots movement, if you are questioning government's uh, policies and pro-market, uh, you know, sort of, economic liberal policies, um, then um, which are anyway, you know, uh, many a times adversely affecting uh, the poorest of the poor, um, then you are not uh, welcome. What do you think are the issues that face us globally and also in India uh, in 2011? I mean, obviously, we all know about climate change, economic upheaval, political upheaval, water security, food security. Out of those issues, what do you think are particularly pertinent to the situation in India? Well, all these crises are real crises. So nobody would sort of deny that uh, climate change uh, debate is fake or food crisis is fake because people are now um, facing those uh, issues. But one of the dangers um, uh, of, of looking at these issues in, uh, in a kind of isolated manner is that then um, you are trading off between uh, all critical issues. Um, I was in a dialogue uh, last week in Manila with a group of civil society organizations and I heard uh, an interesting point that um, in, in 70s, 80s and 90s uh, many civil society, particularly the indigenous civil society organizations were not known for their professional capacity but raising uh, their ability to raise critical issues. Uh, but with the demand from the uh, international development uh, uh, you know, aid uh, program that you have to be professional, you have to be specialized, uh, all these have also uh, in a way diminished the ability of the civil society to look at the issues uh, holistically. It's almost like becoming a university. You are specialized in political science, you are specialized in sociology, you are specialized in geography or physics, chemistry, but not looking at the world crisis in a holistic manner. So I would say that um, all these issues are real issues. Uh, they need to be seen in a more integrated manner as opposed to take a solo view of it or a kind of silo uh, approach to the development. That's going to be a dangerous stake uh, on development.